In this video, I'd like to talk about time and events in Touch Designer. In Touch Designer, there's a series of ways that we can measure time. One of the most effective and easiest ways to do that is to use the timer chop. The timer chop allows you to run a timer at a specified time um, and do things based on the results of that timer. So um, right now I have a timer, uh, I'm gonna initialize it and we're gonna see this thing run. So when I initialize it, we get this ready flag. Uh, all of the other uh, uh, channels are set to zero and you can see this running in this trail. So if I uh, start this timer, you can see that uh, the timer fraction starts to increment and so does the timer seconds. Uh, we have also flipped the ready flag from one to zero and the running flag from zero to one. And this is important because we can watch these channels to do other things in our networks. Uh, right now, this timer is has a set length of 10 seconds. I can, of course, change the uh, units to be samples or frames if I wanted to um, use this for other things. Uh, but in this case, I just want to count up to 10. So I'll re-init, which is basically like resetting the timer back down to zero, and then start it again, and we can see this thing run through. Um, an important uh, channel to look at here are the done and done pulse channels. When the timer finishes, uh, done will flag high and done pulse will flag high for just one frame. And that's important because uh, we can watch those to do other things in our network once that timer completes. Um, another example of using timer is down here where we will use it to run a movie uh, file in. So uh, this movie file in is set to specify index, and then the index is a reference to the timer seconds here with the seconds unit being selected um, in the index. So if I were to play this timer now, um, we'll watch this video play out for 10 seconds, looping itself on, the, um, on its last frame. So uh, this is one in interesting way of using timers. Um, if I re-init here and uh, start it again, I can also play with the playback speed of this timer. So I can make it run faster or I can make it run slower. And this is another very powerful tool that timers have uh, in controlling parts of your network. Another interesting chop uh, in the time and events um, uh, category is the trigger chop. Uh, the trigger chop allows us to run an ADSR um, uh, uh, event um, on a, a, a channel. So uh, as uh, this runs, we will see a, uh, a curve breakout in this ADSR. And ADSR stands for attack, decay, sustain, and release. So if I reset this, um, this trail here, I can show you each of these parts. So this first part of the trail, uh, the rising action here, this is known as the attack. Um, so attack can have a few different parameters associated with it, one being attack length. So if we change this to maybe be a one second attack, uh, our attack will actually take longer now um, to reach the peak of our trigger. Right, so our curve is a little different here. Um, and again, another, another uh, place to play around is the sustain level. So if I move the sustain level down to maybe 0.2 and then uh, re-trigger this, uh, you can see that our graph takes a slightly different shape from before. And this is a way to add some nuance into your animations um, and also uh, trigger events uh, based on user actions. So uh, let's say I had a button um, I can use this button in this trigger to trigger various things. I'm going to have to turn off my, uh, my trail here because it doesn't uh, necessarily like the button. But if I trigger this button, uh, I, can, I can run this ADSR. Um, and the, uh, the interesting thing is as long as the button stays on, the trigger will remain at the sustain level. So this, is, this can be a useful way of... of triggering actions or triggering events in your network. Another uh, chop that I'd like to look at here is the event chop. So the event chop is very similar to the trigger chop as it relies on this concept of ADSR. Um, however, it comes with some added bonuses. Um, one of which is if I place a button down here uh, and as I trigger this button, uh, 
to um, run, we'll see that it, it runs that ADSR in the same way that Trigger did. We also get the total time that it's taken uh, to run this button. So um, uh, I will press and release this button this time and we'll see the full uh, graph of the ADSR run. Um, however, in, in this case, if I were to press this button multiple times, we'll see a series of these ADSR timers uh, stack up next to each other. And as they complete, those samples go away. So this is a good way of tracking multiple events that are happening on your, um, in your networks. So uh, we'll see them uh, gather into this event and then uh, go away as, that, uh, as, the, as the timers uh, release. So this was looking at time and events in Touch Designer using chops.